Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. NERSA announced ESCOM's tariff increases for the coming three years amid serious financial, operational and governance problems at the utility. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the details. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Were the increases announced by NERSA a surprise? I think it's yes and no. I think if you've been watching the process very closely, you'll know that ESCOM was asking for a lot more than what they got. What they've got from April 1 this year is 13.8%. That is the 9.4% that was approved as, as part of the, the multi-year price determination, the fourth one of that, MYPD4. And they then you have to add in the 4.41 that they've already received because of an adjudication last year of three regulatory clearing account applications. These are applications where Eskom seeks to claw back uh, revenues um, that they, they didn't earn during the period against the assumed tariff. So, the, the, so I think it would, it's not a surprise because Eskom was asking for a lot more, 15 times three, um, and if you take that for the April one this year, with the RCA it would have been over 20%. So getting 13%, uh, 13.8% doesn't look that bad. But I think in the society's imagination, it's, it's hugely horrific because I think there was a view that, they sh that Eskom shouldn't be getting anything more than inflation at this stage, given the state of the economy, given that uh, the consumer is just generally feeling uh, put upon at the moment with fuel price increases and inflationary pressures all round. So I think uh, when uh, you know people look at that, 13.8% for 2019-20, for followed by 8.1% for the following year and 5.2% for the following year. I think there's going to be a, a lot of resistance and hostility to that. Could the regulator have done more to reflect ESCOM's governance failings in its determination? Uh, I think this was the big discussion and debate for, uh, I think, both for the regulators and for society. And I'd, I think the, the, the issue is that the regulator is constrained by the rules and by the legislations that govern it uh, and regulations that govern it. And uh, they, they took some time to go through those regulations and as well as the act that uh, governs the determination of electricity prices. And I think once you go through that, you know, I think uh, NERSA is, needs to show that it is a responsible regulator, that it's not a populist that can just blow uh, with whatever the, the, the prevailing wind of the time is. And obviously the prevailing wind is to give Eskom as, very li as little as possible from a, um, a society perspective. From a, from a government perspective, which has already announced the bailout for Eskom of 23 billion rand a year, they obviously wanted the, the regulator to um, you know, have a higher increase so that we didn't have to lean much, as much on the fiscus as we are uh, to, to support Eskom. So I think it really is a balancing act and I think within the rules and to show, create policy certainty, I think it would have been uh, basically Eskom abandoning uh, the methodology uh, and uh, to not grant Eskom some of the aspects that it's asking for. What it made very clear is that it's going to do its own investigations and as things arise where they can be quantified around the governance and malfeasance and wh where that's had an impact uh, on increases in tariffs in some ways because you know corruption does lead to inflated prices, inflated tenders, et cetera, being uh, issued, uh, being awarded. Uh, where they can be quantified, they will make adjustments in the future. So the moment uh, they weren't able to quantify it in terms of the methodology, they worked to a strict uh, a, a methodology which is really an allowable revenue uh, every year that they grant Eskom. And in terms of that allowable revenue methodology, it was hard for them to offset sort of governance failings uh, against the amounts Eskom uh, was asking for. The other offsets uh, came, you know, when they did a prudency test or an efficiency test against the elements that are the components that make up that allowable revenue, like primary energy, like RPPs. Uh, like the operational expenditure and uh, the sort of a, 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 a what they would give a return to Eskom on its um, uh, asset base. So the, that's really, they, they were bound to that. And I think in terms of policy certainty, uh, it was an important thing that they, they, they didn't just abandon their methodology. 
The increases will hurt consumers, but are still not enough to address ESCOM's funding problems. So what's next? That's right. I mean, <coughs> the, the increases uh, in terms of allowable revenue still leave ESCOM about 100 billion rand short from what they were requesting. And they made it clear in the application that, that they had already cut in terms of <laughs> that allowable that revenue uh, allowance right back to the bone. They were even in, there were some elements of negative returns for certain years uh, in the MYPD4 application, which was the application administered. Obviously, uh, the first year, I think, because they've got the 23 billion rand coming in from the fiscus, from the taxpayer, and they've got 13.8, that looks like a fairly uh, stable year for Eskom in terms of sort of balancing the books. They're going to be announcing big, big losses. I think it's the outer years that will be worrying Eskom a lot more, the 8.1 um, and the 5.2 for the two outer years. Those, again, are before any regulatory clearing account adjustments. Now, we do know that they've already, uh, NURSA has already given an adjustment of 3.6 billion that will come in in one of those two outer years. Um, and uh, so that will have an upward uh, impact on one of those two outer year tariff adjustments. We don't know what that fig figure is and how it will be liquidated. But that is a lot less than what Eskom again, was asking for in its regu regulatory clearing account application for year five of MYPD3. Um, and it was really asking for s something north of 20 billion. So they got 3.6, and that will be liquidated in one of the two outer years. So we are seeing upward pressure on tariffs, uh, even during this period. And we're going to see other RCA applications. But then we've also seen Eskom taking both the previous RCA as well as the, the one-year the one year tariff adjustment that was given to the High Court on review. That matter is going to now have to be heard in the coming months. And where the judge lands on that, and if they feel that ESC, um, NURSA has maybe used too much discretion or has deviated too far from the methodology, we may see f uh, further tightening of the methodology, and that can go either way. It could go in Eskom's favour, which is what is why Eskom has taken it to court. Or it could go uh, in NURSA's favour, uh, which I think society would welcome. But I think we're going to have to see how that plays out because the user pay principle is important here, not not only for uh, for now but into the future. And Eskom is, has been sort of saying for many many years that we know we're nowhere near cost reflectivity. Now this issue of cost reflectivity is up for debate and is highly contentious and especially very clouded by the, the sort of corruption allegations around Eskom. But it's at some point it is a, a, a mathematical and it's a technical discussion that we have to get our minds around what is a cost-reflective tariff in the South African context and how are we going to navigate to that without uh, a massive economic and social disruption uh, that, uh, that big tariff hikes can, can lead to. So I think we know in here a resolution uh, we are a lot better down the track than we were a few months ago where Eskom as going concern status was really in question. We didn't know whether the shareholder in the form of the taxpayer, the, the government was going to bail it out. We now know that. That's now baked in 23 billion rand a year, at least for the next three years. So that's 69 billion. But possibly, and I think we must accept, it is going to be longer. The bailout uh, terms are going to be longer. And it's going to take us for at least 10 years, if not longer, that we're going to continue injecting some sort of support into Eskom. Then there's the whole issue of the restructuring and what that's going to do. Will it uh, uh, definitely lower costs in the system is, is unclear. In fact, the immediate outlook would be there'd be some r r r higher costs through the unbundling. So there won't be an immediate relief, but I think directionally it's correct. We need to have an independent system uh, operate a grid company it's able to procure ultimately a lease cost uh, system for the country. And we can't do that in a vertically integrated setting. So directionally, it's long term correct. Short term, there could be pain as well. And I think not, le not least disruption with inside Eskom, where I think uh, staff and employees and managers haven't really been brought on side in terms of the uh, what it means, the implications of this restructuring. So I think we, we've We've moved the needle, but there's a long way to go in terms of getting a sustainable solution for Eskom. The tariff increases help for the first year. The outer years, I think, are, are going to be a worry. 
which means more possibly leaning on the taxpayer. And as we know, the taxpayer is at the end of its tether <laughs> in terms of being able to uh, support ESKIM. So um, I think uh, it's, you know, it's, it's baby steps, but we've got a long way to go before we're at a, a point where we can say our electricity supply industry is on a stable footing. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.